pushing it, killing it. of Disney Consumer Products and Interactive Media! Good afternoon and welcome. You all enjoying D23 so far? That's what I thought. That's great. Well, I am Jimmy Pitaro, and I am thrilled to welcome all of you here in the arena, as well as all of you joining us via live stream to the Walt Disney Company Video Showcase. Now, we have an exciting program in store filled with previews, never before seen gameplay, announcements and product reveals, and of course, some very special guests. Now, what you are about to see is a result of innovation, collaboration, and inspiration led by the team at Disney Consumer Products and Interactive Media, where it is our mission to bring the magic of Disney into the daily lives of families and fans around the world. And when it comes to games, we're working with the best developers in the world to create experiences that put you at the center of the story. In fact, gamers and fans of our stories have never had more to look forward to. And our slate, quite honestly, has never been more exciting. Whether it's Disney magic, Pixar creativity, Marvel action, or Star Wars adventure, there's something for everyone. And over the next hour, you're gonna hear from the folks bringing you the biggest and most innovative games and tech-driven experiences in our history. You're gonna get a first look at Star Wars Battlefront II. Our most ambitious Star Wars game yet. It has everything you all have been asking for. Single player campaign mode. Much more content than the last Battlefront and so much more. Now, my daughter and my two nieces are in the audience today. And I'm incredibly proud that for the very first time as a part of a major Star Wars video game, we will feature a female protagonist. She's a new character named Aiden, and players can follow her journey through an original story that helps bridge the gap between Return, Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. I can't wait for you to meet this character and learn more about her fantastic story. We'll then take a look at Marvel's Spider-Man. This is an all-new experience from Insomniac Games and Marvel that's exclusive to Sony's PlayStation. Now, this is a Spider-Man game unlike any you've ever played before featuring a Spider-Man you've never seen before and a story you've never heard before. To say this game is epic would be an understatement. And of course, we have something for our Disney fans. I'm assuming there's a few Disney fans in the audience right now? Well, trust me, you won't want to miss the announcement we're going to make about what's next for Kingdom Hearts 3.
Now, our friends at Square Enix have truly outdone themselves. I'm not going to steal anyone's thunder. I'm going to stop with that. Um, lots to look forward to there. But that is not all. In addition to these games, we're going to unveil two exciting, never-before-seen projects that tap the latest technology and immerse you into the Marvel and Star Wars universes in ways you've only just imagined. If you've ever dreamed of being a Jedi or a superhero, and my son, who's also in the audience today, will definitely tell you that I have, well, your time has now come. These experiences truly are mind-blowing, and I can't wait for you to see them today. Now, the original plan was for me to host today's show, but I have a couple of friends who, between the two of them, have tens of millions of subscribers and followers. And as it turns out, I have just about zero. And so I thought you all might be really excited to hear from them instead. You know them as Jack Septicai and Strawberry 17. And they're going to take they're going to take the stage in just a minute. But before I wrap up, I want to thank all of you. Whether it's our theme parks, our movies, our TV shows, or our games, we're only able to bring the Walt Disney Company stories to life because you have made them such an important part of yours. So on behalf of everyone who helped make today possible, thank you. Now, let's get started. Please welcome Jack Septicai and Strawberry 17. <laughs> this is crazy. I just wanted to say thank you guys both so much. I know how passionate both of you are about video games, and I personally couldn't think of a better duo to be hosting us today. So Stop it some more. Oh, Jimmy. Keep going. With that, <laughs> they are 100% yours. Knock them down. Woo! Thank you. Bye, guys. All right, see ya. Well, uh, I'm oh. excited to talk about video games. Are you? Yes. Who else is excited about video games? Anyone excited for Kingdom Hearts? Yeah! A few people. All right, we'll save that for, you know, <laughs> last. Wait, but what are, you, what are you excited for? Wait, let's, okay. Let's do this on the count of three, okay? Okay. Three, two, one, Kingdom Spider Hearts. Oh. <sighs> we gotta be on the same page. We're hosting this. It has to be, okay. you know, together. Okay. Yeah, we let's can do Let's do this it. one more time. Okay. Ready? Three, two, one. Star Wars! Let's kick it off with some Battlefront 2! So, we got some very special guests here today. <laughs> Please help me welcome on stage Janina Gavankar, who plays Commander Aiden Versio in Star Wars Battlefront 2, and Steve Blank from the Lucasfilm Story Group. I know. Yeah, please sit down. Take Hello, a chair. everyone. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Guys, I've never heard that song before. That is that new? I can't do it. You just tell, please tell them. Please tell them immediately. Of course, I would be happy to. That is a brand new theme song for Iden Versio. You have your own song. That's crazy. I want a theme song. Me too. Pretty cool. Next year. Next year. Next year. Okay. <laughs> So, Steve, you're from the Lucasfilm Story Group, yeah. so could you give us a little bit of an overview on what Battlefront 2 is for those of us who may not be familiar with it? Of course, I would be happy to. So, so far we've gone through a couple events, talked about a couple of details. We unveiled back in uh, April at Star Wars Celebration 
a number of new pieces of information, and then we followed up last month at EA Play, which maybe people saw Janina host in an incredible way. Did great. Killed it. And what we've been sharing is some great details um, coming out of DICE, Motive, and Criterion for all of the great multiplayer combat we're gonna see. We're gonna see uh, across all three eras in this game in multiplayer, so we're gonna see prequel trilogy, we're gonna see original trilogy, we're gonna see new trilogy, and incredible space combat is going to be a major part of this game. And of course, the reason Janina and I are here today, we have announced that there's going to be a single player campaign mode. Yes. Yes. I am, oh yeah, go ahead guys. I am most excited for that, so just please tell me more about the single player campaign. I would love to. So it's been a great collaboration with Motive Studios and specifically our writers for the single player campaign are Mitch Dyer and Walt Williams. Awesome guys. <laughs> and this image that is up on the giant screen behind me. Oh, uh, it's very big. It's very big. Is perfectly encapsulates sort of what the catalyst for this story is. So you've got standing up there uh, Commander Iden Versio herself, leader of Inferno Squad with her comrades Dell and Hask in the background, and they're watching the explosion of the second Death Star, a really memorable moment, obviously, from Star Wars. Mm. But what is unique about this is that we're seeing it from the Imperial perspective now. And so what does that mean if you are part of the Empire you watch the destruction of the second Death Star. You know about the death of the Emperor. What challenges does that prevent, present to you? What choices do you have to make? And that's really the thrust of our story, is watching Aiden as she has to go down that path in a new world order. That Great. sounds so good. <laughs> So, we've heard a lot about Commander Aiden Versio. You're 100 feet tall on the screen. <laughs> and you're, uh, we know you're going to burst. You're so I, They just gave me a helmet. This. I'm dying. Oh, my God. I'm so <laughs> excited. So, uh, tell, tell us what it's like to be part of the Star Wars universe and uh, to get a role like that. Well, are there any Star Wars fans in the audience? I hope so. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I imagine what it's like to sit in this chair and have the honor of being this person. It is truly, it's the, the most wonderful thing that I could have, I never imagined this would happen to me. I'm, I'm so honored. That being said, I'm also a gamer and <laughs> I have been for a while and I love this medium so very much for storytelling. And it, it's like the, this wonderful place to, to be able to unpack this perspective. Uh, and the, the thing that was so surprising in this whole experience so far has been how collaborative it is. I did not think that was the case. I thought I would show up and they'd say, please stand here and say these words, and now you're in a Star War. And that is not <laughs> yeah. what it's been. As actors, we've been given access to the writers and the producers and the directors and, and military consultants to really work on making this an authentic Star Wars story. And they let me do things. Like I got to do EA Play and like I got- I loved you at that. Can I just interject? I was excited about this, but seeing you so pumped and so passionate about your character made me like jump out of my skin. Thank I'm like, you. I have to play this I game. I can't, I, I get to come to stuff like this and then like, do you want to see a video? <laughs> <laughs> they let me show you videos. <laughs> this, this video in particular is wonderful because it's like a backstage pass to see what it's like to break new ground in the Star Wars galaxy. Wow. Roll that tape. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been a fan of the dark side. The idea of the Imperial perspective is you never really understand who they are as people, right? Or how the organization works. How can we distill that and how can we make a story around that? The story of Battlefront 2 is absolutely an essential story. What happened after Return of the Jedi? What happened to the galaxy? What happened to the Empire without an Emperor? What it might feel like to be in this galaxy as it starts to break apart. What's really exciting about this story is that we're gonna see it from the point of view of a character like Aiden. So we're gonna see it from this Imperial point of view. Inferno Squad is a black ops team that most people don't even know exist. We weren't expecting special forces. We happen to be on Endor when the second Death Star explodes. 
Aiden is presented with an extreme challenge, the destruction of the Death Star 2 and the death of the Emperor. What sort of choices would somebody in that situation have to make about who they are and what the galaxy was going to become? And it's interesting, does that mean, now that the Empire's fallen, that they're the underdogs? Aiden is a tried and true and through and through Imperial. She's somebody who grew up on a planet called Vardos. She was very quickly put into a military camp for children. She has spent her whole life building up to this moment to be commander of Inferno Squad. I'm off to inform the Admiral that Operation Syndic proceed as planned. Hask is the most zealous of them all, I would say. He's the most interested and invested in how far the Empire is willing to go. He was an orphan, so he needed something to latch onto. Empire is peace and justice and order. Even when people are faltering around him, he pushes forward and says, no, the Empire is the way. I'm picking up the stress calls, too many to count. Dell has seen more of the galaxy than most people in the Empire. He actually grew up on Coruscant during the time of the Jedi. He brings a lot of humor. Him and Aiden have a bit of a banter, have a bit of a laugh. Yes. <laughs> Family is a really important element in Star Wars, and one of the things that we wanted to make sure we captured is the dynamic between Garrick Versio and his daughter Aiden Versio. This is the catalyst for Aiden, where she learns the future of the Empire, and she's elevated to a point by her father. Here are next assignments. They are... Unusual. She's my daughter. She's all I have. I do need for her to understand why I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. Everything in Star Wars is connected, and part of our job is to make sure that the games we're making do connect back into that larger universe. But we're now able to use this game in Battlefront 2 as a resource to take this information into future development projects. Them. I think all those gamers out there are gonna just love it. This is the culmination of all of the things that are good in the world. <laughs> Video games, Star Wars, and a team of people that are willing to take the time to do the work. We have to take risks, we have to be bold, we have to push everyone's boundaries and leave a good footprint behind. No big deal, just a Star Wars game. You could feel the whole game in the stage as well. Like a massage. Kind yeah. Of thing. yeah. <laughs> I saw a few lightsabers down there, so that's just so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there's a lot of Star Wars out there. We have, we have TV, we have movies, we have animated. Um, so what sets this story apart from those stories, and specifically in regards to video games? So you have the term story in your job title, so you take this one. <laughs> I will tackle that. So I think one of the things that we always approach as a story group when we're thinking about telling new Star Wars stories in general is what is the right story per platform? Because each platform has its strengths and what it can, can really revel in. And one of the great things about video games is that you actually get to inhabit a character. You get to play as somebody. And so it was fascinating to us about, the, about Battlefront 2 and Aiden Versio is that you get to be a commander in the Empire at this really challenging time. And so that's something that we wanted people to be able to feel and be able to, to go out there and be that Imperial. And so with that video game, you get the opportunity to do that you can play as that character, which is always incredibly exciting. Yeah. Uh, I'm also kind of a big Star Wars fan, and I've never heard of Vardos before. Is it a yeah. place I can vacation? Is it good this time of year? Please tell me more. Uh, I will answer that as Aiden. OK. <laughs> Vardos is beautiful. I'll tell you why. Hmm? It's an imperial homeworld. It's beautiful because it's peaceful, and it's orderly, oh. like all planets should be in the galaxy. Yeah, my, my butt is clenched. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, it is beautiful, I mean, it's where she grew up and it's where she went to school, she was at the top of her class. Vardos holds a lot of heart for her. Yeah. And it's also where she learned to be a commander, you know? And like, like look at this girl, she, 
the great thing is, on November 17th, you get to feel what it's like to be a commander for the Empire. Awesome. <laughs> That's cool. I'm excited. I can't wait to play. It's kind of scary. <laughs> just say it. <laughs> just, just come on over to this side of things. Okay, I, I'm warming up to it a small <laughs> bit, okay? So we're going to try something a little different this time. We're, we're going to throw to uh, a caller on a live stream. Um, we have uh, a person named John, who's a huge fan of the series, and they're actually in Anaheim. Yeah. So we're going to try and throw to them if Thank we have you. that. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, John, are you there? Yep. Hello? Hello? Hey, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, I want to ask a few questions. Um, my other name is FN2187. <laughs> I love you too, babe. I do. Oh. <laughs> John, I'm a bit flustered. I knew you were coming out, but now I'm here and it's, it's, it's all happening. I had to, I had to. I've just left the uh, Last Jedi panel and uh, Woo! I, had to, uh, I had to stop by and, and, and give my gamers a, a visit. Well, you're a big Battlefront fan, right? Genuinely. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I'm a, a massive Battlefront fan. And I, I don't know if you remember, I actually sent out a tweet which wasn't planned. <laughs> I just sent out a tweet because I'm a massive fan of Br Battlefront and EA responded. I've been, you know, trying to fight for the fans for a, a good single player campaign. Thank you, man. And now we have it. Yes! Now we have it. Now we have it. Also, on top of that, uh, you get to play as me. Nice! Which is good. Are you going to play as yourself? Yes, I am. Yeah. Yes, I am. <laughs> So, as a huge fan of Battlefront 2, what are you most looking forward to in this new version of the game? Um, I've, I've, I've only played, like... Uh... Wait, you've played it? Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Yikes. Dude, what? Yep. Yep, that's, that's me right there. That's Amazing. Right there. Come on! Uh, <laughs> by the way, don't judge my aiming, okay? It's different. <laughs> the game's set up different. <laughs> but I've, 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 I've played it, as you can see, and, and, it's, and it's really good. You are phenomenal in it. It's Thanks. fantastic. Oh it's a great God. story. And I'm excited for people to get to know these characters on a more intimate level. You, you, you feel like you're, you're playing against real danger because you're more invested in these characters due to that single player campaign. But also on top of that, I'm going to be whooping a lot of fans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry. There's going to be some time for that. <laughs> right. Well, thanks for giving us something to look forward to. Now you guys are leaving us with something today. Yes. Uh, check under your chairs. Oh, us. Not you guys. Check under your chairs. <laughs> we'll get yeah. you one too. I didn't Those know you were coming, are, uh, so we didn't bring one for you. Whoa, look no, at the one for John. I feel like that's yeah. a shame. <laughs> but that's, I know they're not under your chairs at this moment, but we are happy to say we didn't want to leave anyone empty handed. So at the end of this panel, when you are leaving, everyone will get this fantastic poster. It's like Christmas! Of Iden. Thanks and for joining us this afternoon, guys. Thank you. Thank you that's so awesome. much, guys. Yeah. Thank, Thank you guys you so, so much, much for, for being here. Thank Give it up guys. for Star Wars. Give it up for Star Wars. Just John Boyega walking up on stage. Whatever. Back in his head still. <laughs> All right, thank you. That's my name, yes. I, I love you too. <laughs> so, that, that was a little crazy. We all went a bit wild there with that one. So, we're going to slow things down a small bit. We're going to change things up and switch gears a bit. So, we're going to bring out Mike Goslin, who is the VP of Advanced Development at Disney. So, give it up for Mike. How's it going? My boy, what's Hi. up? How you doing? Thanks for joining us. So I, I heard you're here today to talk about augmented reality. So for people who don't know what that is, could you uh, explain it a little bit? Sure. Augmented reality is a technology that lets you combine computer-generated objects with the real world. So oh. bringing them together to create an illusion. So I could put a virtual tiger using AR 
right here in front of us, and it would look like it was really here. We could walk around it and look from any angle, and it'd stay in the right spot. Wow, I would want like a cute monkey or a panda. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. We can do that too. But it's also like the Snapchat filters, right? Yeah, you know the mustaches, you know, you can Pokemon put the mustache. Go. It, again, it's a computer mustache, real face, together, it looks like I have a mustache. I but love we that think, stuff. We think AR can do a lot more. Really? Yeah. So how, how does Disney fit into the whole augmented reality world then? Disney's always used technologies to find new ways to tell stories. I learned this back when I started uh, at Imagineering, and we think AR is a great platform for a new kind of storytelling. All right. <laughs> so, I'm excited to see some of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. So do you have something to show us? Well, so Star Wars, we got to talk about Star Wars, so. Of course. Yeah. AR has always been a big part of the Star Wars stories, going back all the way to the beginning. So remember in the first in a, in a New Hope, Princess Leia appears early in the movie as a hologram, and then later all the way up to The Force Awakens where they have the, the galaxy maps and the, the Starkiller base. Yeah. So it's always been really important. My personal favorite, though, is the Hollow Chess game from the Millennium Ooh, Falcon, you know, yeah. with the little monsters. That's so cool. That, anybody like Hollow Chess? Yeah. <laughs> we haven't been able to play it yet, though. Well, we've always wanted to create that game, and we've never been able, the technology just hasn't existed to do that until now. What? Until now? We've been working on our own version of augmented reality, and I'm, I'm very excited to give you a very first look at it today. I've got Whoa. this case right here, so let me pull it out. So this has never been seen before. I'm revealing this for the first time. Yes. We've been working on, we teamed up with Lenovo and Lucasfilm to build our very own augmented reality headset. Uh, this will... This will let everyone experience their favorite moments from Star Wars like never before. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. So let me tell you, it's very simple. Okay. Let me tell you how it works. Yeah. You download an app to your phone, you slip your phone into the headset, right here, Whoa. and then you put it on and you're ready to play. <gasps> that's incredible, that's Whoa. so easy. You want to try it on? Yeah. Here you go. <clears throat> wow. Wait. Whoa. Can you see me? Yeah. Wait, so I, I can still like I can still see everything. Hi. Yeah. So, <laughs> do I look cool? <laughs> so it's really important to be able to see, right? Because again, you're combining computer images with the real world. So you got to be able to see. It's like wearing sunglasses. Yeah. So not everybody can try it on today, unfortunately. So I was able to smuggle some footage out of our lab oh. on some experiences that we've been working on. Nice. Right. So now you can play Hollow Chess for real in your own living room. See, that's our rug. That's our room. And you can bring epic battles to life where action figures run around and you've got X-Wings and, and uh, Imperial Walkers all in your room. All your living you. room, you're just... Yeah. And we're, we're just getting started. Wow. Okay, so I have to ask this just because... Yeah, I mean, clap, that's, that's incredible. Yeah, that's a pretty big deal. <laughs> it's 2017, it's about time. We've been waiting for this. <laughs> but I think what everyone's probably thinking is what about lightsabers, right? Of course. Okay, so you got to do lightsabers, right? So we were inspired by that moment where Luke turns on his lightsaber for the first time. Is there any, has anybody dreamed of having that moment, turning on a lightsaber? I think, I think there's a couple okay. of lightsabers down so, there. <laughs> so that's what we're going for. And we're going to be showing you a great deal more of this in the coming weeks. We've got lots of stuff to show. I can only give you a quick glimpse today, but we've got a little bit of video here. Ooh. Wow. and leave it there. <laughs> so, so if you're interested in finding out more, you're in luck. We have a website, jedichallenges.com. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Again. I'm going to take my It's crazy. Box. Can Thanks I keep it? Time. Come on, leave it on stage. Oh. He's gone. We'll get it later. It's just real life hollow chest, whatever. No big deal. <laughs> I can't wait to do the lightsaber thing. Yeah, me That's too. <laughs> Okay, so now we've moved on from Star Wars, so let's, let's get a little bit into Marvel. Is there any Marvel fans out there? <laughs> so, you might have seen a small game called Spider-Man at E3, closed out the Sony press conference. 
Pretty big deal, so let's bring on stage right now Bill Roseman, the Executive Creative Director at Marvel Games, and Brian Intahar, Creative Director at Insomniac Games. Give it up! So, Spider-Man. I like the red, too. Yeah, yeah. You gotta be on brand, right? Hey, uh, Empire State University, did, is that where you went? It's an amazing institution of higher learning. <laughs> <laughs> guys, we're so incredibly excited about Spider-Man. I mean, we're all a bunch of webheads here, right, guys? Yeah. A little bit. Um, <laughs> so, can you talk about the game and uh, what goes into creating it? Because it's, it's massive. This is a big game. It, it is big, and um, I mean, it's funny you mention that because it's uh, our most ambitious game yet. I mean, it's really unprecedented to have uh, Marvel working with Insomniac uh, and Sony. And yes, it's going to be it's going to be huge. It's going to be massive. But at the same time, we're really telling a very personal and human story. Uh, and I was reminded of that yesterday. I was actually sitting out there, and I was watching Joe Casada during his Cup of Joe talk. And he was telling a story when, you know, when he became editor-in-chief, and he, and he went into Stan Lee's office, and he said, Stan, what's the, the key to telling a, a Marvel story, creating a Marvel character? And Stan said, hey, you can have a character in a cool costume on the edge of a building, and they can jump off, and you can look and say, well, that's a pretty cool costume. But Stan said, if you can get the people to care about the person under the mask, if you get to know who they are, who they're fighting for, what they care about, then when that character jumps off the building, you are with them jumping off the building. And when I was a kid and I read my Spider-Man comics, whatever was going on in my life, it went away. Yeah. And I was with Spider-Man. Yeah. And so when we decided to make the game, we wanted to find uh, a partner who understood that, who not only could tell amazing stories, who not only had a spectacular level of quality, and could also bring the fun of yeah. Spider-Man. But most importantly, we wanted to find friends who grew up with Spider-Man, just like us. And we found that perfect partner in Insomniac. Aww. Aww. Aww man. You guys are gonna make us cry up here. You're make me cry. So, as you said, Insomniac, huge pedigree. Very great wealth library of games, and we all love them, and they're super fun to play. So, can you tell us why you chose to do a Spider-Man game this time around? It's Spider-Man. I mean... Good answer. <laughs> uh, I mean, for me and for everybody in Insomniac, I mean, quite frankly, this is a dream come true. I mean, look at that character. I Badass. Mean, look, we're, we're, we are just like everybody out there. We are fans. We love this character. We love Marvel. And when it comes to Spider-Man, he just fits our studio culture, our personality so well, from his sense of humor to the relatability to telling that human story, but also swinging around New York City, <laughs> all those gadgets, yeah. all the quips, it it's fits Insomniac perfectly. Yeah. So, uh, Bill, it's a, it's a new universe and it's a new story. It still has the DNA of actually being Spider-Man, but could you tell us a bit about the, the new world that you guys are creating? Yeah, well, we, we were really inspired, uh, in fact, by, um, there was a comic book series called Ultimate Spider-Man. So good! M might have heard of it. So good! <laughs> and when they launched that it's book, amazing. they were, they were, they were uh, retelling the Spider-Man story from the very beginning, but in, in a new way. They wanted to keep readers guessing, and we were really inspired by that. So you will see fam very familiar faces, but you will see them in new positions. You'll see a, a, a mix of characters you know very well, and then there may be some characters that you don't know, but that you're soon going to love. So we want to keep everybody on the edge of your seats and tell an all-new original Spider-Man story. We're going to tell our Spider-Man story. Ah, oh, that's so cool. So did you bring a video for us, Bill? Well, I think not only do we have a video, well, why don't you take it away? Because you, you right. you're in it. So as I said, you know, I'm up here representing Insomniac, but um, I'm just part of a, an amazing team in Burbank and in North Carolina that are working on Spider-Man. And we have, it's video game development is challenging, tough, but also exciting. And we have a little piece that shows you what it goes into making Spider-Man. Awesome. 
The greatest thing about working on a Spider-Man game is that you're working on a Spider-Man game. The hardest thing is that it's a Spider-Man game. We really care about storytelling here at Insomniac. And I think that's how we go into every day we come here. There's this push to really get it right. One of the most compelling things uh, about Spider-Man is just when Peter Parker and Spider-Man's worlds collide. And we've tried really hard to weave the two stories together to create a story that is not necessarily just a superhero story, but a human story as well. So this Spider-Man is a little different. He's older, he's 23, so he's been Spider-Man for eight years. and kind of like an athlete in the prime of his career, he's starting to get good at the Spider-Man thing. The nice thing about playing an experienced Spider-Man is that he's already familiar with his powers, right? He's not just discovering them. We always think of Spider-Man as we call him the acrobatic improviser. He's looking for not only how he can take advantage of the way the enemies are positioned, but what around him. Could he use this object to grab with his webs and throw at an enemy? We want people to not only see the enemies in front of them, but the environment around to take advantage of both of them. He also knows that the criminals out in the city know how he works as well, so um, he's got to mix it up. So even though he is more experienced, the challenges are going to be bigger than he's ever faced before. Spider-Man has a rich history of having great stories. The core of our story is this duality between being Peter Parker and being Spider-Man. What's cool about Mr. Negative is that he also has a duality. He's got his positive side as Martin Lee, who runs the homeless shelters in the city, but he also has his negative side. Martin Lee. When Peter makes the connection that the leader of the Inner Demons is the guy who my aunt works for, we got the perfect collision of those two worlds. So many people have their own vision of what Spider-Man should look like, what he should sound like, and in the end, we just have to put a new and fresh twist on who he is. And for us, it's really, really important to deliver those big spectacle moments, those near impossible scenarios that only someone like Spider-Man can survive, and put you in that action. You got this, you got this, you got this! We understand what this character means to people in here. And we're making this game with a lot of heart, and we're gonna do whatever it takes to give people the ultimate Spider-Man experience, the game that they've been waiting for. Oh, man! Yeah! Ah! It's so good! Yeah. It's so good! I have chills! I've seen that video like 200 times, and I yeah. still smile after every time I see it. Oh, it's incredible. I cosplay like as Spider-Gwen, yep. and I, I love the Spidey-verse, so I'm... Like, Wait, so when am I going to see the white spider version of your... Uh, wh when is it? I, oh. I got my suit. I'll be right back. Okay, all right, okay. all right. No, no. Okay, we'll just finish this up. Guys, there was something we had never seen before in that video. There was Peter's apartment, and he was fighting Fisk. That's exciting. Yeah, well, we wanted to bring something new to the D23 crowd, right? So, so those two scenes uh, that you saw, they talk about those colliding worlds. Like, we're going to get very personal. So you, we, you see where Peter Parker lives uh, when he has the mask off. You see what's all in his room, and all those elements make Peter who he is. Uh, and so we're getting very, very personal and intimate with Peter. And then at the same time, you see him, once he pulls on that mask, he goes out in the world and he fights huge characters like Wilson Fisk. So uh, again, uh, this, we're gonna see, it, it's, it's, a, it's a fresh new way to see both sides of this character's life that we love. And, and that's just really a, a small glimpse at some of the characters you're gonna see in this game. Yeah, that's we just the opening. A, a, yeah, that's just the opening of the game, you know, in the beginning of the game. So we have a huge cast, a lots of villains, lots of them. Yes. And uh, I think people are gonna be pretty excited. I'm pretty excited too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've talked a lot about the story side of the new Spider-Man game, but everyone wants to know, I want to know about, and everyone's worried about it, is the, the web swing, the traversal, the parkour. Can you tell us a bit as about Peter, that? As Peter says in the video, we got this. We got it. We're going to be good. <laughs> We're going to be okay. Um, yes, nailing the, the web swinging is crucial. It's a requirement and I mean even since you know E3 was a month ago you know we've already improved our web swinging it's easier to gain speed now um, you know yes we've read all the feedback online and we're reading <laughs> all that stuff. we listen to you guys a lot yes. and we are you know constantly looking to improve the game so you know we want to continue have that sense of flow fluidity no obstacles too big for him to overcome and that takes I get that with the traversal, but also in the combat, you know, combat's evolving every single day. You saw one of the uh, gadgets, that web tripwire, right? Well, yeah. you can stick it in objects, 
what I can do is also stick it onto an enemy, and if they're close enough, they just slam into each other. So we want to have gadgets wow. that really allow him to have a lot of fun during combat as well. That's awesome. I can't wait to play it. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Thank you for having me, guys. Yeah. Have a great show. Spider-Man! So much Spider-Man stuff. Awesome. That's, uh, that's pretty great. It's amazing, it's spectacular, it's superior, it's gonna be the ultimate Spider-Man experience. <laughs> that's pretty good, I feel like you've said that before. Yeah. Yeah, it's in the back of his head. Um, so what else can we check out here uh, at D23 from Marvel Games? Yeah, so if you go to the Marvel booth, um, we have five games that you can get your hands on right now. We have uh, two of our mobile games, uh, Marvel Future Fight and Marvel Puzzle Quest. Uh, we have two console games, uh, Marvel Heroes Omega mm -hmm. and Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Oh, all, love that game. All at the booth right now. You can play them today. Nice. I'll do it after this. Wait, there's, there's only four games up there, though. Well, Jack, you are very smart, my friend. I'm glad you uh, mentioned that because our <laughs> fifth game is Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2. Yeah! Yeah. I got to play that at E3, it's incredible. It's really cool, this one is yeah. a sequel to the first one. What's awesome about this is the villain is Kang the Conqueror. He likes to go to different time periods, conquer them and bring them all together. So you're gonna have multiple versions of the same character. So keeping with the Spider-Man theme, you, in the game you may have from the past, Spider-Man Noir. Ooh, from the ooh. future, yes. you may have Spider-Man 2099. And from a whole different timeline, you may have your fave strawberry, Spider Gwen. Yes, please, <laughs> I've been waiting. And there's actually another Spider-Man that we haven't announced yet. Who? But hey, you know, again, this is for the D23 fans. You want to see a character reveal? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. There we go. It's the homemade suit from Spider-Man Homecoming. And uh, hey, it, the game is available to pre-order today. Oh, it's so Whoa. exciting. That suit looks so comfy. Like, that's my sweatpants. Yeah, he's basically. so cute. Yeah. That. <laughs> um, so that was incredible. But that's not all. You have a really, really big announcement today. Well, I mean, again, D23 is the ultimate fan experience, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, how about a world exclusive premiere? Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> yes, please. Do you want to hear about a game that no one in the entire universe have heard about yet? Yeah. All right, this is just for you. You know, we've talked about uh, our mobile games. We've talked about console games. Hey, you ready for Marvel to go virtual reality? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get us out of here! 
<laughs> yeah. Woo! So you might have been wondering who this man is who just wandered up on stage while that was going on. We have on stage with us Steve Arnold, who is the head of Oculus Studios. Hey guys. Thank you, Steve, for being with us here today. It's so great to be here with you guys. Was that Captain Marvel? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know how excited you are. Yeah. She's my fave. I like her, too. Yeah. Um, Steve, let me ask, why a Marvel game in VR? I mean, why not, right? But why? Well, in VR, I mean, you can do the impossible. And so we have this incredible opportunity to deliver experiences that are essentially just wish fulfillment. Yeah. And so I remember years ago when I first tried the Rift, uh, I think that my first thought coming out of it was, man, I wish I had superpowers. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know, I want to fly. I want to shoot beams out of my hands. I want to lift a car over my head and throw it at bad guys. And so uh, maybe a little selfishly, I wanted to build a game that delivered on that fantasy. Yeah. And for me personally, my opinion is there is no one that does superheroes and superpowers better than the folks at Marvel. And so they have been the perfect partner to make this game with. Yeah, I mean, you're spot on with that one. Yeah. That's, that's so exciting, though, right? You read a comic book, you do the cosplay. The next best thing would to be, become that hero and have the powers. For sure. That's usually what Photoshop is for, for me. But um, now we get to go into VR. So for people who have never tried VR, can you tell us how this will work with Marvel? Sure. There, there are a couple of things that VR does really well that we wanted to lean into in this game in particular. One is kind of the sense of scale you get being in virtual reality. And so we're building characters like Rocket Raccoon who are actually really small. Mm -hmm. Then on the other end of the spectrum, there's the Hulk who's humongous. And when you're in there looking down at your enemies, I mean, you genuinely feel like a giant. Uh, and then secondly, the, there's a power of social presence that you get in VR where you can be in there with someone who's maybe miles and miles away, but you feel like you're in the same room with them. And so we really wanted to make sure this game, you could play it cooperatively and be teammates. And I mean, who doesn't love a classic Marvel team up? So yeah, yeah. yeah it's kind of incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you, you mentioned that there's Rocket, and we can see Hulk on the screen and some other characters as well, but are there any other characters that you're going to bring to the game? Well, I can say this, uh, you know, this is only the beginning. There's going to be a full roster of characters, and next week at San Diego Comic-Con, you can play the game. You can unleash your inner hero at San Diego Comic-Con, and we're also going to do another character reveal. Ooh, any hints? Yeah. I could, but then no spoilers. shield may come from the ceiling and <laughs> all right, all right. take we, me away. We won't put you at risk. Um, well, has anyone else played this game? Um, well, uh, I hope you don't get mad, but Hello, maybe one of your friends Welcome has. to Marvel Powers United VR. Tyler's to my right. Hi. Hi. And Ethan. You guys are so big. I'm so small. All right, come on, guys. We got work to do. We need to work as a team. <laughs> Thought we were just gonna get to hang out and look at cool space oh, stuff. I got it. It's Tyler, where are you? I'm above you. I am a surgeon with this thing. Watch this sick move. I got a missile. Nice mess. All right, so we just finished up with Marvel Powers United VR. This game is an exclusive on the Oculus Rift and Touch, uh, so it'll be coming out in 2018. <laughs> That's cool. I was yeah. oh. Oh. Well. Hi. Look who we have. <laughs> oh, yes, I know. So you got to play the game already. Yeah, we didn't, but you got to play the game. I know, yeah. Of course. It was great. Must be nice. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Must be nice being Markiplier. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, no, it was really cool. Um, they actually, we played it for about an hour. That was only like a minute long video. We had a ton of fun with it. Yeah. Wow. We, we, like, it was an early release of it, so we, sure. we tried our best to break it, and that was even more fun, mm. uh, just being <laughs> with our friends, because you were right, like, the sense of scale is different, like, I played the Hulk, and I felt so tall, and, it, and like, uh, Ethan was Rocket Raccoon down right. there, and he was just like, whoa, <laughs> Mark, is that you? And I'm like, yeah, it's me. But then you can trigger Rocket's jetpack, and then you're 20 feet in the air. Yeah, yeah. whatever, that's yeah. less impressive. Bigger than the Hulk. Yeah. Rocket. <laughs> The best part about this is, guys, when it comes out, we can all play it together. I'll be Captain Marvel. I call Hulk. I'll be Hulk. Oh. 
Mark can be Hulk. Okay. You can be Rocket. Why do I have to be Rocket? Because. I'm, I got Hulk, right? I can be Hulk. Uh, I'm not for sure about that. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that later. Go be Hulk. God. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. ってのに随分な挨拶じゃねえか。あんたらに関わってうまくいった試しがないんだよ。ささ、帰った帰った。お帰りはあちらから。好きにするがいいさ。ただし一つだけ教えておく。この世界に黒い箱はないかい。黒
、えー、会場に伺ってですねあのファンの熱気を直接感じる貴重な機会を得ました。Well, recently we wrapped up the Kingdom Hearts World Orchestra where I was able to go and visit. I've heard from our staff and saw the reactions and actually really felt the fashion、uh, myself from all the fans. That's awesome. So, at last, <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> So, at the last D23 event, you announced the Big Hero 6 world. And we already know. Yes. <laughs> we already know that there's going to be a Tangled world as well. But I believe that you have a new world to show off for us today. Eh. In the last D23, there was a Baymax world to show off for us today. There was a new world to show off for us 今回もワールド発表があるとお伺いしましたがいかがでしょうか、はいえー、そうですねこれまで D23 は何度か参加させていただいたんですけどもまああまり多くの情報はお届けできなかったんですが今回はちょっと特別、えー、新しいワールドの情報を多めに持ってきましたのでご覧いただきたいなと思ってます。Well, I've actually been to D23 a couple of times, but I don't think I've been able to show all that much information. So this time we have something pretty special. So, this is the first time I've been to D23. All right, well, do you guys want to see it now? Yeah! はい、それでは映像をお願いします。All right, so let's roll the trailer. どこだよここん俺たちちっちゃくなってるそれにこの格好あっきは驚いてもいいのかな早くだぞあいつら誰だうん、君たち新しいおもちゃなのかおもちゃさっきのモヤモヤのことを知っているのかあれはハートレスだよハートレスは前からここにいたのかいや最近になって現れたんだそういえばそのハートレスが現れたのとみんながいなくなった時期は一致するな他に何か手がかりはないかなみんなが消えた時に変わったこととかうんあれかなあれだなあれですねどれアンディたちが消えた直後あの黒いモヤモヤと一緒にお前たちのようなフードのついた黒い格好をしたやつが現れた黒いフードそれってまさか救済機関知ってるやつなのかここで起こってる異変の原因がわかるかもしれない俺たちに任せてくれないかいや空たちだけには任せられないえみんながいなくなった原因がわかるなら俺たちの問題でもあるむしろ力を貸してくれ<笑>あ<っ><笑>それでその黒コートはどこにグソ
偵察隊からの報告はターゲットが最後に確認されたのはギャラクシートイズです最近できた新しいおもちゃ屋だな案内するよ窓から屋根を伝っていくんだした闇を手に入れなければならないそれにはこの世界の心のつながりが手がかりになる We just met backstage. <laughs> They're very scary. I didn't know they were coming out. That was kind of, I got scared for a minute. So that's, that's a pretty shocking announcement to have Pixar be part of the Kingdom Hearts universe. Yeah. I don't think any of us expected that. <laughs> so Jason, can you tell us a small bit about what the collaboration between Pixar and Square Enix has been like? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I've been lucky enough to work at Pixar for 23 years uh, in the story department. Uh, I started when I was five. Uh, it's amazing 
but I was in the story department for Toy Story, uh, Toy Story 2. I was a uh, story supervisor for Toy Story 3. And uh, so Buzz and Woody have been in my life for half my life. And I remember the very first meeting uh, when we got around the table and talked about the idea of bringing Buzz and Woody and the gang uh, into the world of Kingdom Hearts. And it, it was so exciting. And we were so uh, enthusiastic about the promise and uh, the amazing game we could make. <laughs> I, get, I, I think everybody else is enthusiastic about it as well. I feel like I need an inhaler. Like, I need yeah, more oxygen. That was a lot brain. to take it in. It was in. a lot. Uh, Tasha, you're a diehard Kingdom Hearts fan, correct? Um, yeah, a little bit. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I'm really excited to work on this project because I've been a gamer all my life. Yeah. And I'm a huge RPG nerd and love the Kingdom Hearts series. Mm -hmm. And I've also worked at Pixar for a long time and animated on Toy Story 2. Well, no big deal. So, <laughs> these characters are very important to me, and it is just really fun to see them all together. Collide, right? Yeah. And you, uh, you worked on the game and it helped bring it to life with the art style, creative direction, and animation even. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So so um, one of my favorite things to work on was um, helping to design the toy versions of Sora, Donald. It looks so good. It looks they so look good. They look really good. And um, <laughs> that cosplay is going to be crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and yeah. Um, the, uh, the Keyblade, um, as a gamer, I love collecting all the different Keyblades from all the different worlds. And um, helping work on the Toy Story Keyblade was really fun. Yeah. I hope I can collect the toys in real life. Yes, I want all of, all of them, please. No, me too. Yes. <laughs> so, Jason, you mentioned that you worked a lot, very heavily, in the story department. So, can you tell us a bit about the original story you're bringing to Kingdom Hearts with Pixar? Yeah, I, I mean, to me, that's the coolest thing, is, is for the game, this is a brand new story. It exists only in Kingdom Hearts 3, and uh, Numero San and, and his brilliance was able to pitch something that we loved, and John Lasseter has been involved from the first day. Uh, and John loves this. Uh, John is so into it. And that first meeting where we, we decided, yes, we got to do it, uh, he looked at us all around the table and uh, square in the eyes and said, make it good. <laughs> so like, yes. no, no pressure. Uh, but I, I really feel like this thing is something that we are all very proud of, so excited to be a part of, and can't wait for you guys to see yourselves. Oh man, a brand new Toy Story story. That's, that's a lot of stories, but that's incredible, yeah. right? Yeah! Come on, that's good. Wow, uh, Nomura-san, in closing, do you have anything else to add? Toy Story. So, this is a Toy Story. So, this is a それが最終言葉にお許しいただきます。He's uh, always hoped that Toy Story would be part of the Kingdom Hearts series, and um, it's almost like my dream came true. And I hope that you know I'm happy, and I hope that the fans are also happy. Hi. Should he have a final, some final words? Yes, please. Yes, please. Eh, uh, so <笑>何を言うんですか。ファンに何か。えっと、そうですね。あれ、なんだっけな。例えばトレーラー。あ、そうですか。すいません。忘れました。えっとですね、あの、先ほど見ていただいたトレーラーなんですけども、あの、前回
、えー、アップされますがぜひ、えー、違いを見ていただければなと思っています。Well, his first point is that we will be uploading both the Japanese and English version of the Kingdom Hearts 3 trailers that you saw today.、Uh, the short Hercules version with no text overlay, as well as the full Toy Story trailer.、Uh, one thing he noted was the language displays are slightly different amongst the regions, so please try seeing the various trailers. あとですね、まあ、やっとトイ・ストーリーも発表できまして、えー、18年ということも発表できまして、まあ、これで。ずっと隠してたのがちょっと一安心してですね、えー、また次の情報また喜んでいただけるものを公開できるように、えー、また考えてますのでお楽しみにしていてください。So it's been 18 years of Toy Story, and he's really excited that we're here today.、Um, he also said he's thinking about the next announcement,、um, so please wait for that as well. そしてあの最後になりますが、えー、今日会場に来てくださった皆様に、えー、ポスターのプレゼントがありますのでぜひ受け取っていってくださいあとスマートフォンでやっているユニオンクロスの方でも今日の発表を記念して空のメダルを配布しますのでそちらもぜひ、えー、手に入れていただければなと思っております。And in final closing, to commemorate today's special announcement, he's giving posters to everybody in this room of Kingdom Hearts 3. And in addition, if you play Kingdom Hearts U- Union Cross, you get a special in game medal from now for quite some time. So check that out as well. Guys, thank you so much. This has been an incredible experience. Thank you. And thank you so much for today. Yeah. <laughs> They're back. The mission is on! Activate the troops! Playtime is a go! go. So, Kingdom Hearts 3 2018, how about that? So, that was really fantastic, all you guys. Thank you, thank you so much. I want to start by thanking our fantastic hosts, Jack Septic Eye and Strawberry 17, and to our, our partners at Square Enix, Insomniac Games, EA, Oculus, and Sanzoro. Thank you guys so much. And a very big thank you to our special guest, Markiplier. Janina Gavinkar, thank you so much. And John Boyega, thank you all. And of course, to all of our Disney and Marvel panelists and all those who work behind the scenes to put this all together. Thank you, thank you. Now, as, as you all just saw, our game slate. Has something new and exciting for all of our fans, whether you love Disney, Pixar, Marvel, or Star Wars, or of course all of the above. There's so much to look forward to. And I want to close out by once again thanking all of you. You are the reason why we're all here and why we strive each and every day to bring our incredible stories and characters to life. In new and interactive ways. And so, on behalf of everyone at Disney Consumer Products and Interactive Media, 
Thank you. I hope you enjoy the rest of D23. Have a great weekend.